Hello, my friends. This is Reverend Dr. Juliana Taylor, and I'm a prophetic psychologist. I'm a psychologist that hears from God. So God loves to show me things that give us spiritual authority, but that our authority can come above the soul realm. That's the conquering of mental dilemmas, is to have the spirit come above the mind. Amen. For us to guard our hearts with all diligence from the mind of Christ. That's healing. That's mental healing. That's emotional healing. And that's physical healing. But right now we're going to talk about purpose. And the word says it like this. We fight not flesh and blood, but principalities and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So what is he talking about? He's talking about we fight things up here. And we have to fight them from higher ground. We're fighting traumas and triggers. Basically, we're not fighting people. No, we're not. And I have watched this thing play out hundreds of times. And I have watched this thing play out with my clients thousands of times. And what God is saying here, often as human beings, as the soul in the cell, soul realm, we are not soul, we are spirit, we are our spiritual identity. Amen. I just finished writing a book called Becoming Who You Already Are, Your Holy Identity. And that is truly who we are. We are our spiritual identity. So what we're doing here, everybody's vessel job description, is to make that transformation. We were translated from the perfect, from the imperfect, from the law of sin and death. Amen. The curse of the law sin consciousness to righteousness consciousness, the perfect law of liberty. So now what we have to do is learn how to bring the flesh under subjection. We became the new creature in Christ, the spirit being our holy identity. It meant the righteousness of God in Christ, our holy identity by faith, by faith and revelation. You know, if you have violent faith and revelation, you don't need much else. That's it. You can forget all the teachings, forget all the how-tos, forget all the hours of prayer and studying. If you can step out a little violent faith and God gives you a little revelation, you are sitting in heavenly places, aren't you? So I'm going to discuss something that could save you light years. I've been caught in this trap. Believe me, I have. And you don't have to be, get this, is a revelation. Sometimes we think we're influenced by people. You know that somebody, sometimes somebody comes into our life and it's a person and everything becomes that person. You know, you hear people blame their teachers, blame their husbands, blame their wives, blame their friends, blame the culture. <laughs> There's a lot of blame. But I have noticed this through Revelation. It is not about people. This is not easy to grasp. This is not easy to believe. So we're going to go back to the word. We fight not flesh and blood. Well, that's people. <laughs> you have to admit, that's people. So what do you mean? What do you mean? What am I fighting? Well, that can lead us to believe that maybe we're fighting devils, but that's not, that's not what God is saying. What God is saying is not about people. You're not going to get your power from fighting people. You know, our walk with Jesus is about, it's about empowerment. It's about spiritual empowerment our spiritual authority, our divine rights, our relationship, abiding in him, that we may do greater works. What does that mean? We may be Christ on earth with all that experience now that he had in his life, with the Holy Ghost to live that, to be empowered as spirit beings. God is not empowering our flesh. Amen. Why would he? <laughs> the flesh is enmity against God and against us. The flesh is warring us for position. The flesh lusts against the, uh, the, the, the spirit, and the spirit lusts against the flesh. Amen. Anyway, purpose. Your purpose, hallelujah, has the power, hallelujah, to raise your spirit above the flesh. It has the power to do that. Faith has the power to do that. And your purpose has the power to do that as well. Amen? So now, 
the flesh that lusts against the spirit. Hear this, beloved, because this could save you a lifetime of trying to fix yourself. Talking about this in therapy, I was a shrink in the world. I have a PhD in psychology. I, with my clients and myself, I did the emotional release work. I did the primal scream. I did the transactional analysis, the Freudian, the you name it, Gestalt, and it was a great experience. And what I learned was I couldn't get healed. But that is better than somebody thinking you can. If I went to graduate school and spent all those years as a psychologist to be firm in my stand, knowing that that system kid did not heal me, because I ended up dying and God had to come and heal me. Hallelujah. Raise me from the dead. Hallelujah. Of lupus and environmental illness. That I know when, when I'm with someone, when I'm ministering, I'm not falling back on that, but I find a lot of people want to incorporate that because they don't have that PhD that didn't do much for them, but, you know, they ended up, well, I didn't think I ended up there from the PhD, but it didn't help me. It didn't help me. It gave me the knowledge that God is a great physician and an outstanding psychiatrist. Amen. Dr. Jesus is way over Freud, beloved. Oh, wow, well, 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 you know, literal light years, literal light years transformative, translative. Amen. You don't want to get caught up in fixing the old self. You don't need that fixing the old self is works. It's the stumbling block, the Bible says. Let it go. Lay it down. You want to get way caught up in God's purpose and let go of everything else. Because purpose will heal the past. Purpose will lift, let me say it again, Purpose will lift you above the flesh. It has the power to do it. Amen. So now, you know this. Guess who else knows this? The flesh knows this. The, the ego fear mind knows this. The carnal mind enmity against God knows this. Your opposition to your destiny knows this. And if it can keep you out of purpose, it has your life. Somebody has to increase and somebody has to decrease. Don't let it be you. Let that flesh come under the subjection to your empowered, redeemed spirit. That's destiny. It's supposed to, and it is inevitable. So why not get this and do it now? Hallelujah. It is inevitable. You hearing me? It has to. Amen. Don't wait till, you know, it has to, and it's done, and it comes under subjection because you're done. <laughs> Amen. Let's do this starting today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your purpose. Now, when you're in your purpose, the, the flesh automatically bows to you. You're in control. That's all. It just, you know, may wore you a little bit for something in the beginning, but you know, after a few days, Bum. You keep moving in faith. You understand. You say, ah, you can't stop me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Call with a holy calling. Taking nothing for myself. Flesh, when I say myself, I mean you. You will bow. See, somebody has to bow here. Don't let it be you, beloved. Because when you bow, you've bowed to the flesh. And that flesh only wants to add idols. Why? To distract you from the power of your purpose. Because once you're up here, you're much harder to bring down than with every little bow you make to that comp that it's a spirit of compromise, not yours. You cannot compromise. It's not a spiritual fruit. It is the fruit of the flesh. Compromise and idolatry are the fruits of the flesh. That's his nature. It's in nature. That's what it does. You know, people are wasting a lot of time looking at every fornication, every little curse word, every little negative thought. All right. But once you get in purpose, beloved, you don't have to worry about all that. The spirit is rocking and rolling. Amen. It is not looking back. It knows who it is. Yeah. It's enjoying its destiny. Amen. So the flesh being is in nature, the big sin, what the flesh wants to get you to do is bow to it, to get you out of your divine purpose. The flesh wants you to bow to its distractions, to its wiles, hear me, to its perceptions and beliefs. Its perceptions and beliefs. What it thinks, what it thinks in your mind of Christ. It's trying to take your mind down, trying to shut your heart with those words and get you out of purpose. 
Purpose is an automatic reversal of the, the illusions of the flesh and the creations of the flesh. Purpose, boom, opens the heart, clears the mind, heals the body. Hallelujah. Very powerful thing. I could feel the minute I step out of purpose, the minute I start to get a little back pain. There's nothing wrong with my back. I start to get a little headache. I get, you know, I'm going to tell you what I do when I get a little out of purpose. This is just a little throw-in secret, personal secret. Reveal myself here. You know, because it happens every once in a while. Purpose changes, and purpose changes with situations. You know, the world has just changed. God is in the new moment. The world has just changed. Stay open for a new direction right now. I was speaking to somebody with that. Don't hold on to old things because God gives you new manna every day. If the old purpose is right for you, you'll get that again. Maybe you have to do a few new ones and then go back to that. Just when you're in purpose, you're going to be elevated. Amen. When you're not in purpose, you're going to think it's the people. Hallelujah. You're going to think it's the people. You're going to think it's Tom and Carol. You're going to think it's because Jane didn't call you. And things aren't going well at your job. And it's where you live, that building, and the blah, blah, blah. And the finances, and the people, and the bank, and the people, and you want a divorce, or you're not married yet, and the people, and should you get this, and should you get that, and the people. When you start think, when you start being oversensitive to people, you're not in your purpose. You're bowing to the compromiser. Amen. And when you start to, to walk in the compromising of the flesh, you get raw, oversensitive. You start crying a lot. If you're crying a lot, it's not your situation. It's that you need to line up and bring that up to purpose today, tomorrow. Now, I'm going to give you some clues on how to find purpose because that's the most important thing, the very most important, more important than praying all day. Amen. Purpose. You just say, oh, so I'm going to go back to Amen. Getting excited about sharing purpose. <laughs> Let's go into the moment of God. When I know something is, you know, not lined up. There's a purpose I'm not in. Amen. I want to find out what it is. I let everything go. And I say to God, I go out. I let everything go. All thoughts, all ideas, all agenda, everything I could possibly think it is. And most importantly, I let go of the fear mind, fear and doubt thinking. And praying about it. Oh, Lord, what can it be? You know, you get through that. What is it? Uh, where are you, God? What should I do? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. You call a friend. What do you think I should do? You see, oof, hallelujah. I feel that when I say it. All that is shutting your heart down. That's the flesh. That's not even you. That is the flesh seducing you to get more out of purpose, to get lost, to get confused, to go in doubt. You know, it's attacking you now. It's kicking you when you are down. Let go of everything. Get out of your house. Get out of your head. Get out of your head. Let go by faith. Let go of thought. When I say let go of everything, I say let go of thought. And I say get out of your house when you get out of your head because it's very hard to do it if you're home alone or with other people. You're being distracted. Get out. And I say to God, it's your universe. I thank you for the manifestation. I'll go sit at Starbucks. I'll go buy a little something at a store. I'll go to Rite Aid and wait online. Amen. <laughs> And you know what happens? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Starts to manifest. I've asked for it by faith, and now God is showing me crazy situ. I just had a crazy situation last week. God redirected me. Fabulous. Amen. Crazy things start to happen where God is showing you. This is what's going to happen over here. Move on from that. Hallelujah. This is the potential over here. Wake up. Wake up. Amen. You call all of a sudden, a friend will call you. I haven't spoken to in a long time. They'll say it. What I'm saying is be aware of it. It's not negative things happening to you. Give it to God and let it manifest. It's so exciting. It's revelation. Honestly, it is. And then once you get it, you're in the right direction. God will build on that. Amen. Let go. Let God and get in purpose. Another purpose idea is you get up in the morning, you set your intent the night before, to do that purpose, to go and experience that thing. How I feel the anointing of God? To do that purpose, to go experience that thing. You go to bed, you say, tomorrow, Lord, I'm going to step out in that. 
I thank you that you manifest. You know, even if there's a little attack, it could be the flesh going, but that you manifest in the day where I go, what happens, who I meet. Well, you know that I see it, that it's magnified, magnified to manifestation. <laughs> I call it Holy Spirit magnification, and it is an awesome, it is God talking to you. It's a very, very beautiful thing. I guarantee you this, beloved. If right now you're not sure of your purpose, if you don't know, you've been tossed a little bit, we're in a pandemic, it's very distracting. Fear comes up and you can't feel the leading of the Lord. Or maybe you were in your purpose and then through all this stress and the news, just I, I suggest this to you. Shut the devices. Shut the news 100%. I had to do it. Shut the news 100%. Shut the smartphones when it's coming in. Shut off the notification buttons. Lay the Facebook, the messenger, because it's all going over the same thing. Fear and doubt. Fear and doubt coming in. Look at this. Look at that. It will take your being able to receive from God. You've got too much going on. Amen. Lay the mind down. Clear yourself out a little bit some word in anything of Jesus. Don't even do it. Don't do it online. Let God speak to you through his word. Just make a commitment. It's like a fast. Make a commitment. Laying it down for a couple of days, Lord. I want to hear from you. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit magnification. Set your intent before you go to bed. Tomorrow, Lord, I would like to know if this is your purpose. I have a feeling it might be, but I want to, I want to witness. Amen. I want the notification from you, not from Facebook. Amen? Amen. Not from Twitter, Lord. <laughs> Not from YouTube. I want it from you. And you get up and you see how you feel and you start to move in that direction. I guarantee you within a couple hours you'll know. Let's say it's wrong. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You realize it's wrong. Take that one off the list. Done. You've got another night to go to bed and get up. Amen? You get up tomorrow. You get up the next day. You get the next day. And I guarantee you within seven days you got this thing down. And you are in the spirit of the holy living God. You are in the spirit and you are anointed by the Holy Ghost. And you are not fighting flesh and blood. And all those people don't have any meaning anymore in a negative way. You're not triggered. You're not raw. You're not crying. You're not sensitive. You're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I love you. God bless you. Let me know what happens. How many purposes you had to go through. Maybe the first one. I hope so. God bless you.